Hi and welcome to another episode of Wine and Wisdom. I'm Thomas Lehuang and you're listening to the TL Podcast where knowledge is shared and no one takes themselves too seriously. The gods must be against me about this thing. God, I was quick to react. I thought I'd grown, but clearly not. (laughs) You've grown, just not in intelligence. (laughs) Cross. Oh, God. How are you guys? Excellent. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Good, good. Get a different backdrop there today, Luke. Yeah, my um, I got one spare room. My daughter's bought a house and left the nest, so I have a spare. Hey, room. she bought yeah. a house, got on her. Yeah, yep. Awesome. First awesome. home buyer. Yeah, so hey, good. Good. I've got somewhere for people to sleep now, and a, a better room to do wine and wisdom. So <laughs> that's yeah. nice. Yeah. So what is it? Uh, since she's uh, received the uh, pay rise as a nurse, or what, what's happened? No, no, no. Well, no, she qualifies in, I think, three weeks as a paramedic. So, um, no, but her and her, her boyfriend, Josh, he's qualified as a carpenter now. So they've decided to get out there and buy and, yeah, which is really good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Let's start with the wine. Let's drink. Let's do that. Let's do, let's do it, Lou. Do you start? Okay. So this is a Leckenfield or Leakenfield, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, Kunawara 2019 Cap Sav. So um, I have to be honest, I wasn't sure if we were doing a, um, a particular variety. So I sent it to Charlotte last night and said, this is what I got left in my cupboard. So this is what we're going with. <laughs> so I had it bought it. out to be exactly that. Kunawara is what we're going for this week. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So um, it's a... 95 points on the holidays 2022 competition or rating whatever you want to call it so who knows i don't know much about it to be honest but um anyway that's mine what are you guys okay. drinking? they're yeah. all gonna taste the same this week uh <laughs> what about you young man chris i like that word young man you can keep that up yeah. um <laughs> i've uh you've picked my favorite uh grape and my favorite region in uh, australia i think kunawara I got a win, Skunawara 2013. We've had it before on the show. Wow. Um, this, yeah, the, Dan Murphy's, you can get this at Dan Murphy's still today off the shelf. It's only a $43 bottle. Amazing wow. drop. Um, I don't know if every, anyone knows. This actual winery was started by a bloke by the name of John Riddick. And they've actually named some wine after him, which is actually the, some of their premium wine. Um, mm-hmm. It's the oldest winery in, in the Kunawara. It was started in 1863 mm. and, and wins bringing out some really good quality uh, reds. I really enjoy their reds. Um, I started collecting this particular um, variety many years ago. I used to work in Liquor Land um, and I had bottles of 86 and 90 and 96. They're all being consumed now. No, they weren't in the garage, Cameron. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my favorite, uh, great favorite region. So that's nice. Like- and John Riddick has got a, a highway that's named after him in the yep. region. And on that highway, there is this estate, which is the Jack Estate. And this week, I've got the Cap South 2015. Mm. So we'll see. But it's going to taste roughly the same. However, I know what's coming up. So that's why I left him for last. Go on, Ken. Make us feel jealous. Feel jealous? Well... <laughs> It's been a um, uh-huh. it's beautiful. It's nice made bottle. a few appearances on the podcast, I think, but the bottle shop I went to only had three to choose from. So um, the other two were only a four on Vivino. So it's a 2018. Where's my camera? There. Yeah. 2018 Cab Sav from St. Hugo from Grant and Sons. Um, oh, we Every time we have one, they're magic. So it's probably, is this the youngest one? What year is yours, Lou? 19. Uh, so you got the youngest, but mine's, mine's younger than the other boys, but uh, we'll no doubt be uh, 
nicer Still than Still a that. great drop, mate. Mm. The same Hugo's caps have or the Shiraz, great drops. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm not sure whether we've had the 18. I'm not sure whether we've had it in <coughs> before, but I know we've had the label before for sure. Yep. Yeah. Mm, for some reason, Charlotte thought it was a Vitus Purum St. Hugo, which would have been a totally different bottle. So, <clears throat> well, we'll have to have a look at that again. Anyway, what's up this week? Let's let's. Two, let's so. Cheers. 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 All right, cheers. I'm late. Cheers hasn't opened his bottle yet. <laughs> Wings dead. Yeah. 90, mm. 91. 94. 96. 96, yeah. 96. 96. And she was, she was doing her duties right up like till the day before or a couple Two of days, days before. She was <clears throat> out there meeting people and hey, mm. what a trooper. That's, yeah. I saw a meme that said she survived World War II. She survived uh COVID, but she couldn't survive Boris Johnson. So that was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boris. What an incredible lady though. Yeah. My God. Amazing. And I, yeah. I heard today that um people had been lining up um overnight all through the night and uh it was five o'clock in the morning. I heard that about four o'clock over there and the queue was still five kilometers long. Yeah. Pay wow. their respect. So that, what an amazing legacy yeah someone told me that she held on that long because she just didn't want charles to be king <laughs> she's trying to outlive him <laughs> i don't know if it was true or not <laughs> wilson's gone he found that funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, uh, so so what makes you think um why did you think that she's extraordinary i'm back mm. i mean to hold, her, I... To, to, to hold her posture i don't know why uh, her Posh is not the right word. Stature. Her, uh, right? Stature. Stature. To hold her stature, but to be, you know, she's, I know she's a queen, but she's very regal. I don't know the word I'm looking for you, mm. but she was very consistent in everything she did. Yeah. Um, I, I know a couple of people that were lucky enough to meet her in different occasions, and she's very good at conversation. Mm. Um, uh, just, can, you know, executed her duties um, mm. all the time. Um, you never heard anything bad. I mean, she had good people around her, I suppose, to help her to do all that as well. And I think too, like she took on that role, I think she was 27 or 28 years old. Um, and she had, she had the three or four kids or whatever it was at that point. But to take on such a huge role and, and to hold that position for so long, but have the love of the world, literally, um, but, you know, even in her, um, like, I mean, we all know how busy we are. Imagine somebody like that, the schedule that they run every day, probably seven days a week. But she never missed church on a Sunday for forever. She never missed having a jam sandwich every day with a little bit of butter as her afternoon tea. She had her habits or her, her rituals, if you like, and she just stood strong and did it. Every, you know, she had she made time for the things that mattered to her, which is yeah. amazing. <laughs> You know, she, had to, she became queen at 25, though. So, to be correct, 25. 25. There's a series, there's a series out uh, we were watching a while back called The Crown, and it was uh, based off, mm. and it was quite closely based off the life of all the royals. And there's a part in it where there's a, a mining town in, I think it was Wales, called Aberdeen. I'm, I might be wrong. And she was. And, and anyway, the half the town got covered in ash and a landslide killed thousands and she didn't go. And it was one of the biggest regrets in her life mm. that she actually didn't go to see the people that had lost the families and so forth. From that regret, she visited the place every year on the anniversary of what had happened. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was amazing, amazing. So yeah. she learned by a mistake, she can see that. And in this, um, obviously, it's a, a series, but it, they really put it down as, and it, you, you actually see she's human and the faults and so yeah, forth. Absolutely. There's a lot of the behind the scene talk, and it's actually mm. very good. A good series if you can watch it called The Crown, anyway. Mm, mm, yeah. Her family's a complete basket case, so she deserves points for surviving that, anyway. <laughs> That's so, a very good point, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what a shit show that is. Yeah. Very good point. <laughs> what a her sister, mate, her sister growing up, her sister was a wild card, mate, I tell you. They were like, she's 
what are we going to do here? But anyway, mm, mm. we all have those, I suppose, in the family, don't we? Can't Cam, do that. Cam, oh, when you, you wouldn't know Cam, I don't think. You, I mean, no, mate. No, being the wild card, I mean, so. I've <laughs> grown, mate. I've grown. You have any thoughts? Do you have any thoughts on it, T.L.? No, I think that you guys said it well. I think for me, it was duty um, that really resounded in, in watching her. I think you can disagree with the Queen about certain things she's done. You can agree with her, you can love her, you can hate her, but her sense of duty was huge. And, and um, like Chris said, to be that consistent over the years, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about the flow effect? Think, think, sorry, can you say that again? The flow on effect, are we going to, when Australia's had a push for a republic for quite a while, is it, is, and I think the royal family as a whole has been losing respect gradually and more increasingly over the last couple of years. Is, is that going to be the end of it, do you reckon? I mean, they're all praising Charles at the moment, but give it five minutes and he'll be back to being the old tumbling, bumbling thing that he was. So it'll be interesting to see where we end up from there. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to lose credibility and it's not going to be anything they do. I think it's just the fact that she's gone. They've lost yeah. a lot of lose credibility with that. Unless I think Prince William steps yeah. in quicker because um, yeah. he's the one that's the next one that's loved. So yeah. that's the way yeah. I see it. But who am I to say? That's what I see. Yeah, I think the same. Do we need it? That's another thing I was going to ask. I don't think we do, but it's... Uh, it's, it's ceremonial now, isn't it? Like it, it then then that's it, um, right? Like I'm neither, I'm neither here nor there. You know, we, the only thing, medals we bloody winner at the Commonwealth Games, so I don't want to lose them. But um, apart from that, like, do we need it? <laughs> yeah. But it's ceremony, isn't it? It's it's all ceremony now. Yeah, but I mean, we're watching. I'm watching the new Game of Thrones at the moment. That's when you had kings and queens and rulers and. and and everything else. What a, anyway. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. Like, I don't think it's needed. What about you guys? Oh, yeah. I, I, I really, I'm like Cam. I don't, it's, it doesn't matter either way to me, really. Um, but yeah. It's, Do we pay any money to them? Do we? We would. I don't know we? how the system works. I don't know how the yeah, system works. I don't know, works. mate. They got Good more money though. than. They got more money than bloody Saudi Arabia for a ceremonial right. Look, I don't understand. That's have the same issue with the church and the amount of money they've got. I don't know. <laughs> don't talk to me about church. The <laughs> other thing, who's going to go on our money now? They're not going to put Charles's head back on the back of our. Yeah, it comes out. Uh, they reckon it'll be out by January next year on the, on the coins, and the five dollar note is still to be decided. <laughs> And just on the money, I was reading an article. There's no fit in there, sorry. Well, his nose fit on the coin. I mean, it's what? And his ears? Well, they fit on the coin. Yeah, the can't, coin just flies away, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fold out coin. Right, just, just on the coins, just on the coins, you should pay attention because if you have one of the $2 coins, I think it was 2013 from her Diamond Jubilee, is it? Um, that two dollar coin and and several other coins from different eras have um, skyrocketed like through the roof. So I think the two dollar coins worth about two hundred dollars. Um, and it's better than a... crypto. Yeah. <laughs> it's only a a Bitcoin, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's called Queen Coin. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I mean, God love her soul. Hope she, yeah. Rest in peace, God lover, and uh, I think it's wonderful they're respecting us so much and the queues are so long and they're they yeah. they're, they're doing everything they can to, you know, send her off in the way she deserves, I think. Yep. Um amazing. Mm. Yeah. Miller for president, I reckon. <laughs> oh <laughs> Dude, what a shit chat. <laughs> 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 I'll never forget what Dodie Al Fayed said about Camilla Parker Bowles. He goes, How does Prince Charles leave Lady Diana to go marry a camel? <laughs> <laughs> that oil money, mate. <laughs> hey, that's personal tax money. That's not very good. Mm. All right, we're going to move anyway. on. Absolutely. Let's move on. <laughs> we're going to move on. What's, the, what's, what's the topic, Cam? <laughs> Uh, knowledge, having it versus 
using it. Mm -hmm. uh, our post-seminar action. <coughs> We've just spent a glorious <coughs> few days in Noosa, um, learning all the uh, ins and outs of not good enough, NGE. Before we get any further, and while I'm still sober, so no, he doesn't think I do it just because I'm pissed. I just want to talk about our little mate over there. He's on the top left to me. Um, had a book come out during the week, mate, so congratulations. Really happy for you. I know some of the work that went into it. I'm sure there was more than you told, but I just mm. want to say publicly, I think the work you're doing in that space is the most important work you've ever done in your life, mate. Mm. Um Thank you. I believe that wholeheartedly. As for the seminar, just from the conversations I had there and the conversations that have been had afterwards, I know you've had a huge effect on people. And I pray, pray to whoever I don't believe in that uh, <laughs> that they they take, they take it on board for longer than a couple of days, which is what we're going to talk about. But um, the subject matter, mate, and the content's going to help a lot of people if we can get it out to the right people and not help them superficially, like really, really serious stuff. So yeah. um, you're to be commended and I'm proud of you as your mate and your brother. And um, um, I know you don't like compliments and all that sort of stuff and you're probably feeling uncomfortable now, but tough, mm -hmm. shit. tough shit. Um, really important. Really, really important. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So on that, we spent three days learning about uh, more about our leadership, but more importantly, uh, about what drives us and what shouldn't drive us and what damage it causes being not good enough. And we get together as leaders every year for three days and there's a different topic each year and a different bunch of learnings. And then unfortunately, we come back from that three days and within probably another three days, half that information or all that information has gone out the window for a lot of people in that room. And we turn up the next year starting from scratch again. So mm. because of that, the topic is what's the difference between having all the knowledge and uh, and using it? There's different words. I could actually you know, applying it or implementing it or all that sort of stuff. And we've spoken about this many times on the podcast, but I think given um, the week we've just had, mm. it's, it's worth revisiting and hopefully some of those people who would normally let the information fly out their ears maybe listen or, or get a hold of this podcast afterwards and I might just give them the kick in the ass to sort of hang in there a bit longer than normal. So mm -hmm. I think there's people, I've had people call me out of the blue that you wouldn't normally, um, would probably normally fall into the category of know it but aren't going to use it. And they, they, it appears, mm. and probably because of the subject matter, as I alluded to before with how important it is, that there's, there's more people <laughs> ready to um, make some real change, which is, Really exciting for them. I can only speak on, on as someone who's been working on it with TL for a little bit longer now and, and um, the weight that has appeared to be lifted off my shoulders and some of the things that have happened in the last week have just been crazy as far as where I'm at with it. So wishing that on everybody, but it doesn't happen without mm. using what you've been taught. So let's, mm. let's talk about it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yep. Well said, Cam, and I 100% I agree. I think this is this is this material um, is definitely needed, and and it, and it is what is required. Um, the pendulum, which Thomas talked about, from systems to people. Um, I think as a result of COVID, the the whole world swung that way, and we see that in the people that we interview. We see that in the in our current staff. We see that in our own selves, you know. Um, and so it's really timing wise is perfect to to dive into this stuff. Um, you know, I think personally walking away from such a in-depth conference, um, I myself, what I find is every year, and I think I've done 12 of them now, 12 leadership seminars, but every year I always find for the first few days there's a little bit of a struggle and it's sort of what clicked for me this time was that little bit of a struggle is because you're going into areas or, or, or mindsets or emotions or feelings that you probably haven't been for a while or you've probably never been. And so you, you're just finding that shift of who you are to out of comfort zone to take on this and, and um, uh, be open to this new sort of level of thinking, feeling, doing and all the rest of it. So I, I so it sort of made sense to me from a woman's point of view because women can tend to be a little bit more emotionally sort of 
driven or whatever, I, I sort of felt a little bit how it could be hard for particularly guys to take on and go through this material because it is opening you up, opening you up and sort of making you a bit more sort of, uh, how can I say, raw? raw? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but anyway, I think, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cover lots more in terms of knowing it and applying it and all the rest of it, but that was just my little takeaway from it as well. I got through that, I got through that little bit of discomfort but it was actually when I started reading your book, Thomas, there was a, there was a part that you talked about on that dreary Saturday morning and what happened. And I, I literally had to stop because I was on, on the plane and I had to stop and just think to myself for five minutes, I sat there in silence because that had happened to me several times, but I didn't know why. But I, and I never told anybody about it because in my mind, I thought, shit, I'm going mad. I think I'm going mad, you know? And so, it was such a thing for me to go, wow, I'm, I'm actually normal. This is a normal thing. Other people go through this, you know? So, yeah, I think whoever hasn't got that book bloody well needs to. I'm going to call BS because Lou just said she sat in silence for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been five seconds. <laughs> it might have been five seconds. <laughs> Lucky Cam had some time to think about that and come back. Happen. No, no, that's <laughs> a, come back. Good come back. The, the still there. I picked on Look, it straight it, away. It might have been five seconds, but you know, but be for me, far be for me to disagree. Far be for me to disagree with you, Lou, just before Chris chimes in. But the conversations I had while we were there and since the, the biggest breakthroughs I think have been made with women. Mm. Some of the prior to the conference, talking to a few people post-conference, the biggest shells and the big, biggest masks, the <clears throat> biggest deep dive that went, uh, the, conversation, the conversations I had with the men up there, very easy conversations, very forthcoming, very forthright, very open. And I sort of went, oh shit, but the, the women was a harder break. I think the, the wall okay. was up for, and yeah, the, the emotional thing, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, yeah. Mm. I'll talk about something else a bit later, but I, don't, I disagree completely that um, women do emotion more than men because you, know, you only got to look at the suicide rate to, to see that's maybe not. Mm. I, think, I think also, Cam, with the men up there, though, we're, they're in a safe, safe environment because we're all familiar with each other and we're all, we all know each other. So maybe for oh, the women men though. to open up. That's true. That's true. Oh, that's true. We're all maybe, in the same environment. That's true. But what I'm getting at is maybe that you, you saw the men were a lot more open because they felt safe, and men a lot of the time don't feel that security or that you know yeah. the safeness to open up to other people. Um, well, I just so maybe think that's, that's thinking why that it was harder in the room for men than women. I disagree. I think I know, I know some females who really yeah. had to go through when would yeah the, the the subject matter that. It's funny how many people you talked to who saw the um, heading on the manual and didn't open the manual. So they spent however long from seeing mm -hmm. that title to actually getting into the conference, working themselves up and telling themselves stories about what was to come. And um, I know a couple of people in particular, <laughs> women that worked themselves right up into an anxious frenzy, scared of the deep dive they were probably going to have to take. And, um, you know, I actually think TL let everyone off the hook a little bit. It could have gone much, much deeper. And, and, and But he's also smart enough to know that had that happened, the room probably would have fallen apart because of, because of the subject matter. So it's really yeah. interesting the minute you make, the minute someone thinks that they're going to have to do a bit of introspection, the whole world comes crashing down around them, doesn't it? It's, it's mm, a yeah, yeah. crazy, crazy thing. Mm, mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no. Chris. Mate, for my, for myself, I got I, mate. It's uh, this year was a privilege to be in the room. Uh, not only you know, I was lucky enough to have my wife in there. She could, which, mate, so you many people, people. <laughs> so many people said <laughs> I've never seen someone take notes like that woman before. Yeah. <laughs> Nowhere to hide now, brother. <laughs> She should be a, no, a stenographer in a, in a court courthouse. Um, yeah. Right. 
Uh, and the system, the colour system she's got, mate, she's, I, I'm, I'm lost. No wonder my undies are all different colour-coded and stuff. In my <laughs> anyway, um, but it was good to have her next to me and, and sort of learning at the same, well, same pace, learning the same thing. She learned a lot faster than I have because I know that she's already been able to go out and use that within her workforce and delivering things and approaching challenging situations a little bit different than she would have done previously. Mm. Um, and and understanding and, and her understanding the material was a lot quicker than mine. Um, mm. I believe her EQ is a lot better than sorry her IQ is a lot better than mine. But mm. for myself, the big thing I took was I don't have to keep everyone happy, mm. but it keep me happy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, hundred percent. So then the topic is having that knowledge and then doing that knowledge, right? So and, and that's the thing, mate. And that's the thing in my whole life I spent it was a big sort of aha moment. Mm. Mate. Which yeah. is I, I've got to look after Chris more rather than everyone mm. else. Yeah. You so. don't have to keep feeding him, mate. That's that I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't starve. There's there's that's for for sure. But we all do it. I think we all have that, um, I don't know, that that thing that we do, that we know we do for whatever reason we do it. And the breakdown on the how to fix those things and the awareness and, you know, embracing it and all that sort of stuff. And, and it is a journey. It's not an overnight process. But the best seminar I've been to in the time that I've been was. Yeah. So, Till, I said to you one night there, I'd, I'd love to sit on the other side one day just to look at everyone's face, or I'll get you to wear a body camera one year just so I can see what you see up there because you're very good at picking who it's gone over the head of and who it's stabbed in the gut and, and who's mm. looking at their phone. And uh, <laughs> Got click. But how did you? I know, I hope you don't mind me saying after day one, you weren't completely satisfied with. with how the information was being accepted by you, but how did it evolve over the three days for you watching people's faces? Yeah, I think the day one I had to set the mood. So I was not really getting into the work. And, and those of you who are, who have read the book, you will know I get into the work very quickly. And, but I couldn't do that in a seminar. I mean, I, I had to give people the time to just go from business mindset to now understanding that it is up to them now to lead the team. Mm -hmm. So it, I knew it was going to take me at least three sessions before I got there. So uh, I only started on NGE by session four. And so when you ask me that question at the end of day two, I, there's two things about me. I, I never look at how well I do. I look at how much people have changed. And I could see that people had only started to struggle with the material by the end of day two, because there was a lot of egos and, and, and a lot of people thinking, no, I'm doing things right and, and whatever happened in the conversation. But I could really see the faces starting to change only by the end of day two. And hence, I couldn't see, I couldn't really see that, you know, someone had changed or someone had really had the aha moment. Uh, I could see that there was a lot of people um, maybe a bit apprehensive about how heavy the material was going to get into because they already had prior knowledge about maybe some of the things I was going to talk about. And I was very careful about that too because it was not about hurrying people through the process. It was about allowing people to go through the process at their own speed. And so by the end of day two, I was playing with getting in and coming out and getting in and coming out just to see how much people were going to get in, you know? And so that was interesting. But by day three, uh, really, I started to see some people really grabbing the bull by the horn and going, no, 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 I'm gonna have to work on myself. I'm gonna have to change this. And it was really interesting to see that. Mm. What's your gut feel on, I mean, I said before that every conference, some people take the info and a lot don't. What's your, I, I think you've changed a lot. I think a lot more people are going to take this on board than, than usual, but what's your yep. gut feel? What did you feel up there? What's your feedback been sent since? Do you think, do you sense a real change or do you think it's going to be the same old 
same old for a lot of people. Uh, I, it's, I'm going to have to be very careful about what I say because I know some of our leaders are going to be watching this, but um, I, I think that the whoever is ready is going to change and whoever is not ready, well, they're going to have to wait for another year. And that's how it works. Uh, I have been doing these kind of seminars for a long time now, and I myself can see that some of the things that I thought I changed in, within myself did not change. And it's taken me a few more seminars to really change the things that I thought I had changed. Um, I mean, just to give you an example, I've been going through the, the an, an very old book of mine. It's about 20, at least 22 years old, that book. It was first published in 2000. It's called The Power of You. She's ordering tablets. And I have been going through that. And I, it shocked me. Rereading the book shocked the hell out of me for two things, two reasons. One, I realized how much I forgot. And, and, and two, I realized how much I, I had actually learned, but then forgot only to come back to it just lately. Mm. And so I realized, you know, we, we can all learn, but how much we use of it, it's, it, there's many factors. And how much of it we come back 22 years later and say, what if I got it then? What if I got that knowledge then? Mm. Would I have really changed? Or what have I been doing the last 22 years? And that's interesting. So in that respect, I'm, I'm, I'm as human as any leaders in that room. Yeah, yeah. Mm. On that, on that 20, yeah, getting that information back from that book, Thomas, is there things that you have gone, I need to put that into place again? Or is there, are you looking at it going, I've changed my perception of that information? No, I, I think that I was maybe part of me was disappointed that I had known a lot of this information 22 years ago. I had that shock, but somehow I have allowed myself to forget. And, and I think that that's the biggest thing. And but now, on the other hand, I'm very positive about it because now that I have remembered that I had forgotten, I don't think that I will forget again what I have remembered. Yeah. Oh, OK, that makes sense. Yeah. So well, that's the that's the topic today. So I mean, you've you've sort of just said that when people are ready to yell, they'll they'll be ready. But is that all it is between having the information and using the not having the knowledge and using the knowledge? Is it a simple case of you'll do it when you're ready? What do you think? Uh I still think no. I, I, my answer to that question would be no, because I think there's a lot of people who are ready that just don't want to or won't. We, we've said okay, it before. It's one of our favourite yeah. lines on here: "Change is hard, right?" So, you know, if you look through, I've got my seven steps here to start changing what what we've got to change. You know, mastermind group and awareness, internal mindfulness, mindful consumption step after step after step and a lot of people are going to look at that no matter how ready they are or or and go shit seven steps no thanks and a lot of people are going to look at step number one which is mastermind group which we've spoken about a lot of times and go my ego is too big to call somebody or i don't know who to call or that. Mm -hmm. i don't know if though that i don't know if i've just contradicted myself and that means they're not ready I think there's probably a lot of people who are ready, but their ego would stop them making that first phone call. Does that, does that, mean, they're, does that mean they're not ready? Am I, am I fighting against myself here? Then, no, then they are not ready, Ken. Okay. <laughs> you know, I... So you, so I, you're, so you think that the, the call whatever percentage you want, I'll be kind and say 50% of the room that aren't going to do anything is just because they're not ready. Yeah. They were probably looking for the easier solutions. And I've been in, in real estate now a long time to know that in, in most leaders want the team to change, but they're not ready to change. Hmm. Right. And, and so that, that is already a big issue. And, and most people are not ready to pay the price for change. Hmm. You know, I we, we'll take a very good example. I, I spoke about forgiveness and I have spoken about forgiveness for a lot of people. I, I spoke about forgiveness for myself. 
And I reread in the book that I've written 22 years ago, and I have reread the book that I've just published. But most of us don't forgive. Most of us say, I will forget, but I will still keep an eye out to judge you in case you redo it. And that is not forgiveness. A lot of people say, I will forgive you, but they say, oh, yeah, but I, I still remember who he is, or I, I still know what he's capable of. That is not forgiveness. Mm. And so they they use a very simple term, maybe one of the points that we have in, in, in the seminar, but then they make it conditional. And, and, and unfortunately, you can't just dilute the words to the way you think. For example, uh, we talk about mastermind group, and it's a word that we probably have to use a thousand times over all of our podcasts. But most people don't have a mastermind group. Most people have got a friendship group. Most people have got a kind of a mateship group. And they talk to the people who talk to and resonate the same things. No wonder they can't change. Mm -hmm. And most people, for example, only call each other to say things like, man, how are you going? Oh, man. It's, it's not working out. Oh, well, you know, it's not working out for me either. And they love it. But if you actually answer the question by saying, what are you talking about? This kind of time is the best time to be successful in real estate. They go, I will not call him again because he's not saying what I would like to hear. Mm, 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 mm. Yep. But the information is not sitting with their norm. So they're, again, their change is uncomfortable, right? So that's why a lot of the people won't change from mm. the information they've received at the at, at, at the seminar because change is uncomfortable change is hard mm. and it, it, until they're ready they they won't do it do you, do you go into those seminars thomas with the understanding that only maybe five or ten percent of the room will pick it up or twenty percent or do you are you Mark, i gave them fifty percent mate you've just said ninety <laughs> you're, you're harsh you're brutal i i, I honestly think that I'll, It'd be one in ten. It'd be one in ten people. That I think I'd it's think, a small number. I didn't want to say it, but I yeah. honestly believe. It. I think it'd be one, maybe two in ten people that had actually grasped that knowledge, and maybe you know one in ten that would take a fair bit of the knowledge, and maybe two, you know, one in uh, two in ten that would take maybe fifty percent. Do you, mm -hmm. do you understand that that knowledge won't be? And if those people who maybe want to learn more, is it revisiting that manual of the secret? Is it going over that manual and? And following the steps, is it is it honestly going to help them to 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 achieve that, you know, the greater concept uh, uh, understanding? I think it's a good question. Uh, I think that everyone can change. It takes a shock, but not everyone goes through a shock when they go into that room. Mm -hmm. For example, if you went into that room and you only had one week in terms of uh, resources before you close your doors you will change. If you went into that room and you lost everyone in your team and you need to now change as a person because the pendulum is now going towards people rather than the system, you will change. Mm. But if you went into that room and you, you're okay, you're making all right kind of profit, there is no change. Mm. Mm. You know, if you went into that room, for example, because the, the, the seminar was way bigger than just running a business, it was about changing you and changing you, Absolutely. meaning teaching yourself to be happy with what you have and, 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 and how to be happy with what you have in order to really accomplish more. If you went into that room and your father was on his deathbed, you will change. Mm -hmm. You see it? And, and so I think that people need shock. And until they have shock, they don't have to. Isn't that sad? Isn't that dangerous that everyone has to hit rock bottom before they make a change? What about the guy in the room that's making $5 million who, who wants to make 10? Isn't there, isn't there some value in that? But he, you know, you say so what you're saying is because I've got X amount or because I'm this successful, I don't need the rest. I don't, mm. but I guess, I don't know if you get that successful without constantly seeking improvement. I think I, I, I personally think, um, and going from my own experience, and we've said it a, a hundred times on here before, the teacher will appear when the student is ready. And I think what I think a lot of the times we take in this um, information or this knowledge, of, if you like, and but you do need that shock. I remember from my own personal experience when I first started, there was years where it was call Thomas, ask for help, do this, do that, and yeah, 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 until it got to the point where it was like make or break. Um, 
and and I and I finally had to reach out because I had no other option at that point. But it got to the point where it was unbearable not to, so I had to. I think the difference is, and like Thomas was saying in the conferences, people there that they don't they don't necessarily have a shock, and those that don't need a shock to change. I think what the key is is yes, Chris revisiting the manual, but I think a big part of that is awareness of and that and 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 the um, commitment to the material, but being aware of the difference that um, you can make by applying the material, because we can all consume as much information as we want, but until we apply that knowledge, it, it, you don't know until you know, you know what I mean? And so I've found myself since we've left, being more aware of how I talk to people, how people talk to me, a lot of different things which I find is that my NG or is that theirs, you know? And so this awareness, I'm not necessarily a master at any of this material whatsoever, but I'm starting in small steps is just to be aware to begin with and then say better things and ask better questions. And you know what I mean? Like, and just start that connection creation, if you like. Um, that's my... What's the... T.L., you know more, more than me about... Well, you probably know more people, but... There are people that have let themselves have had the shock, but, but they'd rather go broke and they'd rather go homeless and they'd rather lose their family than change. So being not ready is a very broad brush. Brush, but what yeah. makes someone what what would rather what would make someone rather go broke and lose everything than take a small step towards changing? It's it's very simple. Uh, all you have to go by is the rule that we do things that makes us feel good and avoid things that makes us feel bad. Mm. And what it means is that going for that change makes them feel bad. Otherwise, they would go for it. Going right? broke and losing the house and losing the family and is is to some people less Painful. than having to change. I I, I remember you know uh, there was a fellow that came to port and he started a business and he and he went from nothing to having something like 20 blokes working for him in the space of six months he got so big but then he started to have a whole lot of debt and the sad thing was is he ended up taking his own life because he in his he he took his own life and left his wife and kids because for him and this all came out after that was less painful than to to have to face his reality of he owes so much money and he's going to let all these people down you know and I, yeah. that's hard to comprehend that's really really hard to comprehend and i what is that you know is that ego and a whole lot of other things i don't know but um some people no, just no, ego. i think i think killing and this is i've had this experience this week and i wish thomas's book had come out a week sooner because i would have been able to maybe help a mate of mine but um mm -hmm. I, I've, I've thought about it and i've pondered it and it, it's been hard but killing yourself is probably the ultimate form of NGE I've come to realise whereas the people who are happy to go broke and, and don't kill themselves are more the type of people who are blaming everyone else for their issues rather than themselves mm -hmm. I don't think people who stick their head in a noose instead of a book are um, blaming other people I think they're, they're being too hard on themselves I think that's the ultimate form of not mm. And, and that's why I ask because, you know, I want to, I want people's heads in books, not nooses, and mm. they're the people I want to help. The people that would rather go broke and lose everything and don't do it, then yeah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> Harvey Norman, mate. No interest. But mm. people that are so hard on themselves that the only way out, they think they're doing everyone a favour by by yeah. killing themselves. I, I, that's the bit that. Yeah, you'll never understand, or, or and hopefully no one here with the tools that we've got. I, I called Thomas yesterday. I said, "Mate, I'm sick of hearing about it. I want to do something about it um, because there's got to be something we can do rather than sit here." And I've, I've given a speech on him multiple times about, "Are you okay? They should be every day." And it means nothing. It's token bullshit. Yeah. And and um, yeah, my mate who topped himself on Saturday night, he's 33. He's got three kids. Um, and, but where he grew up, and I know where he grew up, I know his family, and, and and he wouldn't have had anywhere to go. Like our number one step is have a mastermind group. Right? But how does someone in that situation have a mastermind group? It's, it's probably not possible, right? Mm. And so how do we, like, I, you know, and I said to TL, I want to create a space where someone like Moore has somewhere to go and have a beer and just meet other blokes. 
who yeah. have a phone number where he can pick up the phone and go, or, or and vice versa. But but you know, as TL said to me, he said, "Oh mate, there's enough of that. There's there's Lifeline and there's everything else." But mm. um, fuck, for people it's bad enough. The, the pain's bad enough. They go one or two ways. They blame everyone else for it, or they they mm. make the ultimate decision. Yeah. And that, that that bit I want to help, but I, I want to understand also people who, who Do are happy to lose everything. Yeah. And then don't throw himself under a bus, you know. Like I don't I don't mm. get that either. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Well, I think we touched on it earlier, Cam, you said a lot of the guys at the conference were opening up and in touch with what you know they were feeling and so forth. And as I said to you, I think a lot of blokes and we're in a familiar group. And I think the unfortunate thing is men in general don't feel comfortable. Uh, you know, what's what's the men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Venus. Women have like 25,000 words a day. Men have like 8,000. Uh, and, and we're not good, great at expressing ourselves and we retreat into our cave and so forth. I think the unfortunate thing is just a lot of men don't realise that they should be opening up and, mm-hmm. and aren't in touch with... And, and you know, want and then you make jokes about um, and me and my feminine side about you know being in, in touch with your emotional side. Mm. Uh, Do you think, regardless of that, though, anyone with the amount of tools that we got, and this is going to be a huge generalisation, so I'm happy to cop blow back. Yeah, yeah. I would hate to think that anyone who's got the tools that we've got and as lucky as we, we are, so lucky to have that week that we just had. Absolutely. Absolutely, 100%, mate. We are so lucky to have that week. And the irony wasn't lost on me that I've just left this week feeling better than I've ever felt before in my life. Mm. I said to you, I just feel happy, man. Yeah. And I'm so lucky to have that, right? Do you think anyone in that, surely with someone with those sort of tools, with that sort of knowledge, with, with even half that sort of knowledge would come up with a better solution than to kill himself? Yeah. Uh, I know there's an answer. I would assume I've been in some pretty dark holes, but one thing I can say publicly is I've never thought about killing myself. Right? I've been in some very, very dark holes, but I, whether I'm too big a pussy or, or don't want to hurt the other people around me, whatever that is. But mm. surely if you knew there was, I'm sure when someone gets to that point, they think there is no other answer. So surely if they just know there's one other answer or two other answers or three maybe, they don't do it. Mm. And my whole thing all week is how do we give just one answer to people? And I've shared, I've shared TL's book and you know, I've been ringing like crazy, checking in on a bunch of people and I've had random people ringing me that knew the same guy saying what's going on, complete strangers. Like it's mm-hmm. such a big issue and that's why I said TL's work in this space is the most important he's ever done in his life. And yeah. He might not realise it or he might realise it and that's why he's doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then and then for people to have it, and I find it, I think it's I think it's disgraceful to have all the knowledge and then do nothing with it. When when some bloke is just sitting there in his garage just wishing for one small iota of it so he could save his own life and be worthy in front of his kids, I think it's a disgrace. Mm. To sit there and cop all this stuff and take it all in and take, 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 and then to do nothing with it. God, I wish we could still swear on this podcast because I think it's, I think it's, anyway. You might have just slipped one out without noticing, but that's okay. We let that one slip because it wasn't <laughs> swearing. It was very much like a... Passion. It was passion. It was, no, it was kind of a sorry kind of moment. That's why I let it go. But yeah. It, let's have a look at why, then why aren't people using it? Why is it that people go to seminars, they have knowledge, why is it that people go to training? They get the knowledge mm. and they don't do anything with it. Mm. Well, that's what I'm trying to uncover. We, we put it under the banner of they're not ready, but I think there's got to be more to it than they're not ready. Mm. Well, let's have a look at why. Well, what, what is it that they do not to use it or why don't they use it? You know, there was something that I heard and I, and I don't know who said it. We do things for one of two reasons, either pleasure or pain. And um, unfortunately, like unfortunately, what Cam was saying, some people the pain gets too great. They don't know how to the alternative other than to take their own life. 
Um, and some people who get the pain gets enough, they do make a change. And it could be health, it could be financial, it could be a dozen reasons. But I think the basic reason is, you know, it's either the, the pain's not great enough or we don't see the pleasure in doing what we need to do. But on a more superficial level, right? I, I, I did, someone talked to me yesterday and saying, I'm worried about prospecting because I'm not sure what to say if this happens. So I go, no worries. It's only early. I don't expect you to know everything. And today I go, right, uh, we're going to train on that. So let's do a role play. Uh, uh, do we have to? No. Well, yesterday you said your fear was not knowing what to say when we're prospecting. So today we're going to practice prospecting. I'm going to teach you what to say because that was your fear. <clears throat> uh, uh, but I don't like role play. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> there's one way to solve the issue that you talked about yesterday is to do this, but now we're coming up with another thing that we're to avoid the original issue. So is, your, is fear of not knowing what to say in the prospecting call the real issue? Of course not. Mm -hmm. So people, people will disguise not wanting to do something or not changing it in or, or gift wrap it in as many layers as they have to until all those layers are removed. And Chris, I don't, look, we do it on the podcast all the time. So anyway, I'll bring you up. I've been talking to your wife a bit before the podcast, uh, before the seminar and, and after. And I sort of talked about for her, all it is for you is removing trees, removing those layers of the gift wrapping because... For every issue you've ever had, mate, either myself or TL or someone's provided a solution for you, mate, but then the action wasn't there to do it. So you're probably a great person to answer why when we have the knowledge, don't we always apply it? You're spot on, mate. There's no question. No question. So why? And, and, I, and I'll put my hand up to that. And, it, and it's, I don't think that's the avoidance of pain or the seeking of pleasure. There's something else going on there. It's, ha right? it's habit. It, it's, it's is it ego? Is, it, is there ego involved? Maybe or ego. All the things? Mm. Mm, mm. I think goes a huge one for a lot of people. I've got no doubt this person who didn't want to role play, who was coming up with, it was an ego thing, didn't want to be judged. I think the thing is, Cam, I think the most important thing, it's not the amount of knowledge that we consume that's important because a lot. I, I would say 90% of what we consume we don't retain anyway, but it's our ability to apply what we know or have been yeah, taught. Yeah, so the question, there's no disputing that. The question is, why don't we apply it? And no yeah. one's the part okay. and, and, people aren't but, ready yet. Yep, but I think, I think, I think, I think the problem is, is applying what we've been taught comes with a fear of rejection, a fear of judgment, a fear of discomfort, a fear of moving out of comfort zone, all of the above. And I think that is why, um, it's, it's hard to know what we don't know, but what we do know is comfort and our habits and our current routines and our current thinking and our current mindset. And I think the problem is we apply our current mindset if we're having a bad time to the future as well. And if we're having a good time, you know, that those times might we might find that little bit of courage or that that whatever we need to take that next step, but it's applying what we're learning. But a lot of that comes with a lot of fears a lot of fears and that's even just to do simple things like to be open with people and show vulnerability and and things like that that's not easy for some people that is not easy like it, it, it's, it's very easy for some but it's what what i find to be very easy could be extremely hard for somebody else especially um especially somebody with a lot of ego and a lot of um oh, how can i say like um facade like they've got this facade of they're not what they post to be let's put it that way they're not what they post to be so that person who's got this life on on fame or uh, facebook or instagram whatever it is for that person to suddenly apply some of this material very very hard you think there's a fear of such thing as a fear of success too yes do think, uh, and do you think I, I i reckon i know some people that are scared to do it right because if they get it right that means more is going to be expected of them yeah it's the old um I do it at home, right? I know if I, I do the ironing wrong, someone's going to do the ironing for me and I'll never have to iron again, right? Yeah. Um, my wife doesn't listen to the podcast, but um, <laughs> I think I think that's a thing. I think people it, it, are still too happy for everyone else to do it for them sometimes. 100%. 100%. There's a real thing like I know, um, for example, for me growing up, money was never a good thing. Money was always meant struggle, meant hardship, meant 
where do you get it where do you find it how do you survive without it kind of thing so for me i had to make a mind shift money to me meant pain so for me to get more money meant more pain it's crazy but that's how i interpret it and i think that's the other thing that we've got to look at here it's the interpretations or the perceptions of the information that thomas is giving us is is great and might make a lot of sense to him but to some other people how they perceive that information could be totally different um and but yeah just getting to that point cam i think some people have a fear of success personally i know money. pardon responsibility i know like you make a hundred thousand dollars one quarter and you go oh now they want me to make a hundred thousand dollars every quarter we all know people who hit it once and never get back yeah. there because of the the pressure yeah Thoughts to you. Some people don't then don't feel worthy of it too, though. Hey? That's exactly and they're right. brought up in a family where they've gone, you know, well, we can't afford it, we can't do this. It's not a pain, but oh, and then they grow up thinking, well, I'm not worth spending the ten dollars or the hundred dollars or the thousand dollars on. Um, and then when they make it, they go, Well, I'm not worthy of that. So then they sabotage themselves and their results to not achieve it because exactly. of that. So there's exactly. a multitude of angles we can come from uh, on that. Mm -hmm. And there's a dozen different ways, but you're right. A success success can be just as just just as dangerous for people as um, non-performance. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So is the answer then fear? <coughs> you can nail it down to one answer. The difference between having knowledge and using knowledge is fear. Then TL. I think fear is a big part of it. TL. No, I think for me it's more the fear of the unknown. When they walk into the room, most people who are in that seminar, they know what they have. <clears throat> but to change, they don't know what they're going to get. I know and, what's coming out the other side. <laughs> and, and quite often I say to them, listen, none of these things that you are about to hear are things that I have not used on myself. Not only not used on myself, but also on my wife. This is why, for example, my wife listens to every podcast we do. Why? Because I believe in us growing together. Because... There could be a one line that she would discuss with me later on and she'd say, why did you think that way? Or that was very interesting that <clears throat> Chris came up with this line. And, and in the book, I, I say it all the time, it's we either grow together or we will grow apart. And, and, and a lot of people don't realize it. You know, this, the, it is so important that the intake of, of information we take is also the intake that our spouse take. And quite often it is, I sometimes see like spouses where, oh, well, I don't want to listen to this because of it. And I'm going, no, all you have is just your ego. Your ego is being heard at some stage and you're just still there. You're still there. You, you, and, and the longer you wait there, the, lo the further the train's going to go ahead. Mm. And it's been sorry, long sorry. since, sorry? I just said, sorry, not sorry to all those egos. Yes, I, I feel sorry for them because I, I know what it is for even um, people to just embrace the unknown. Mm. And, and, and quite often it, it's, they even reject the material because of that fear of the unknown. They go back to the office. They, many of them are excited with the material. They're gonna go, all right, I'm gonna use it. And I have said in the conference, you're not ready to use it on others yet. You must use it on yourself. Yeah. Pay attention to things. Be aware of what. Why is it that he said this line and I feel this way? That sense of awareness, right, it, it is is all about mindful consumption. And you, once you realize that you you go, hey, today five times I reacted to this kind of lines. So it is something about me. And why is it that I do that? See, just this line here. I know my wife's going to talk to me about it because she's going to go, hold on. I get it. And, and it's so important. Even my twins are, are, are listening to this. Even my, my daughter is listening to this because I go, you only have to get one line that can just shift you away out of ego. You will change for the better. But I truly believe that that fear of the unknown stops a lot of people. They may not like what they have, but gosh, they they okay with that because at least they know what they got. Yeah. Is there, we had seven things to you, seven steps you had to, to the process. And I'm a salesperson, right? So I go, oh, I've got to make that easier. There's, there's, yeah. ten, there's 10 steps, by the way, man. So I don't know where you've travel come Travel light. Up. I stopped at travel light. <laughs> 
He fell asleep in day three. Uh, he probably played one of them videos that got me. I only cried twice. But... <laughs> <laughs> Half as many times I stopped as at number, I stopped at number seven in my written notes. When you wrote on the board, did you go to 10? No, I may not have gone to number 10, but uh, may, I, I, if you looked at the board, I was at the bottom of the page. I did say that. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> So anyway, but, but I, if you I read, I'm a salesperson, mate. I've cut, I've cut 10 to 7 already. But if you read my book, you would have seen the 10. I've read the book. I'm just talking about the people who are sitting in the room who took notes, okay, because not everyone's read the book. Is it possible to get to step one and not have to do the rest? Or is it possible to get to step two and not have to do the rest because no. you're, you're at that point? No. But even though step one is, is big, right, I, I think that step one's very big. I I'll think give, an I'll give you an example. So the respect thing, the respect as a value. My, one of my biggest triggers in life that I have come to realise very recently <laughs> is respect or perceived lack thereof. It, and not only does it trigger me, it triggers me violently. Uh, like I, get, I get very upset. And then just by having that conversation, I haven't read any, I've written down all the, the beliefs that you have and the, and the stuff just by being... The awareness, so I'll say group number two, my mastermind group made me aware and I've had a bit of awareness about it. Mate, I got disrespected so bad yesterday that I normally would have flipped tables and, and spear tackled someone and I just laughed and walked out of the room yeah. laughing. Yeah, but that's that, there was none of the other steps, right? And I go, and I walked away going, hang on, that pretty that prick just said what to me, but I was already down the road after laughing and laughing. Yeah. Laughing. So I go, well, maybe I don't need to go steps. I'm aware of it. Steps one has happened. Step two, obviously I'm aware of it. I'm aware that it's a stupid thing to, maybe stupid's the wrong word, but you can't run your life expecting people to respect you and getting, having a teary every time someone doesn't. So that's been an, enough in that instance to go, oh, well. So that's why I ask. Is it, is, people might look at a list of 10 things to do and go too hard basket. Is there a chance that you don't have to do all 10? Uh, yeah, very highly um, intelligent and advanced people like you. Thank you. But I, I personally would say it's about step 10. I, I think it's okay to get rid of cancer by shooting some laser lights into that spot. But a lot of surgeons will say to you, no, it's best actually to shoot even the, the cells that is next to the cancer cells. So I think it's about doing everything. Mm. Then it, you'll get that. But yes, the, the mastermind group and awareness are two huge aspects. If you have those two, it's an enormous amount already taken off. Mm. But I still believe that the other steps such as Knowing the, I mean, I, I just shared a video with leaders who were in that room that knowing whether you're EQ driven or more IQ driven will set the start. And that's step 10, which is a starting point. You must know that because unless you have that, you may be listening to advice that's going to just get you into one direction, but it's not really going to help you. And then when you try something that doesn't help you, then you stop. Which, which brings me to the reason why most people don't use the material, is that they try to use the material, but they use the wrong side of the material because they didn't understand it. See, each of us has got a very different kind of hardware. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter the software you receive over the last three days. Your hardware will either be able to run that software or you have to just find a way to get that software to work with your hardware. Mm. And unless people get that step 10, it's not going to really work in the long run. Mm. Mm. I don't have your book in front of me, TL. Step 10 is what exactly? Uh, step 10 is about the starting point, knowing where you need to start. Yeah, yeah. knowing which part of SMS you are at, what, knowing whether you're IQ or EQ driven. I mean, listen, Cam, you've been around me for quite a while now. So I think that what, what you're talking about is probably a little bit different because you're pretty advanced in. Yeah, okay. so I look at the list and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll and some of the stuff that you and I, we've already done in terms of work. I mean, a lot of people look at like how hard it's been for you, but I I, I understand that too. But I, I have to say, man, I, I look at the advancement of what you have. Yeah. I, 
I, I do not regret any bit of the either punishment, you may say that word, or changes or uh, motivation for you to just do something different uh, has worked uh, on you over the, the last 18 months or so. Where uh, there's a lot of other leaders, they don't have that, let's say it's uh, that opportunity. No. Because I tell them something and they walk, they walk away and they say, you know what, stop that. I'm not going to do that. It's too hard. Mm-hmm. Where you had no choice because if you, it wasn't done, I was on top of you. You know, so I, I think that this this is where it's a little bit different. I yeah. don't think I don't think that you just did mastermind group or internal mindfulness. I uh, or, or I, I think that you have done uh, for a lot of the last over the last eighteen months. You have done a lot about r- routines. You have done a lot of work about forgiveness. Uh, you know that the chapter on uh, the step on all we need is love. I think you've done a lot of these things already. Um, I can't really say that, you know, you can only do two steps and then it's hunky-dory. I was hoping you'd say that because it's not about me, but there is no cheats. That's the problem. And that's what scares a lot of people off. There are no shortcuts. Yeah. And I think a lot of people will find certain steps easier than others. And human nature's probably go to the ones that you find easier and do the other ones later, if at all. Well, everyone has different levels, right? Tell us right. about it. That's right. Every, everybody is, and even us four, you know, we were all at different levels last year than what we are today, 10 years yeah. ago, and, and whatever. We were at a, an ability to understand and take in material, and then sometimes we weren't, you know. As your starting point, TL, so life goes full circle. If step 10 is knowing the starting point, who's there? Is, it, is that step one? No, no. How do you know? How do you know where you're at? How do you know where you're at unless you've got the map in front of you? Like you, you, you jump in the car and go, oh, "I've got to drive to here. I know where I've got to drive to." But how do people know where they're starting? Yes, and I understand that. But for a lot of people don't realize it. When you put the destination into the GPS, right? So it gives you the map, right? First, you have to buy a GPS machine. <laughs> True. So first, you have to have that mastermind group. Yeah, so step two, step one. Right? <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I, I think that the, to go back to the question that we have to cover here, the difference between having knowledge and using knowledge is how fast are you going to let go of ego? Because a lot of people, they a lot of people have used me over time as their part of their mastermind group, and it's as soon as I say or do something that they don't like, they cut me off. And I, and I go, I get it. It's too uncomfortable. You are not ready. Mm. There's, there's two things I wrote down. I've just got my notes from the from the conference. And there's two he things wrote on the two same things. page. Reed has written four books. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's six pages. There's a fair few notes. He wrote two I'm things. It's writing. a crisp and all. You walked into that one. <laughs> I, I, I got my cheat sheet uh, <laughs> being delivered later. One of them was... Um, when you let go of ego, you're saying that you're no longer chained by your ego um, and it, it no longer controls you. That's one of the things that the points that I put down. And on the same page down the bottom, I've got when we can, when we conquer our fears, um, sorry, when we don't conquer our fears by ignoring them, they will, um, we only conquer them when we embrace them. Yes. I think those combined together is their only starting point to anyone moving forward. Mm. Is that they, they have to have that awareness? They have to have the understanding that ego is not your friend. Some ego is, but most mm. ego, bad ego, is not your friend. And you know what? Fears are just—it's like the boogeyman. Shine a torch on it. Get it out in the open. Embrace it, mm. and then move forward with it. Yep. Yeah. I try to. I try to explain. I, I try to explain my happiness or lightness at the conference to people and I said and I use bad language and it shows I've still got work to do but I said and I use a different word to screw up but I said it's just so it feels so great to know that I'm still a screw up but it's okay because I'm working on it I didn't use the word screw up I used yeah, my yeah. Mind you, you're going to have to be complete with what you say, uh, okay? You are a screw-up that owns an island, and not many screw-ups yeah. own an island. So, so what, what people have to go is they have to take the incomplete thing. They have to go, oh, yeah, okay, he's a screw-up, but have a look at where he's gone and where he's been. And I think that that's, that's the bit I have to do to myself, right? So that's mm. that's a bit I haven't done to myself. Mm. I've spent the whole time saying, 
you're a screw up, you're a screw up, completely ignoring mm. all the all this all the stuff yeah. that we've got and what I've, we've been able to do as a family. And yeah, that was the first family holiday we've ever been on that week. And even that, you know, it, it, so oh, wow. but that's why I said I've still got work because my statement was I'm a screw up, but it's okay because I know I'm working on that. Mm. But man, I'm, happy to, a... I'm happy to be a screw up who's done what I've done. Let me tell you because. <laughs> Do you yeah. think it's an Australian? Do you think it's an, an Aussie trait that we don't pat ourselves on the back? Do you think it's a it's an Aussie thing that we don't? You know, you don't. I think well, it's mate. an Aussie thing to not do it publicly, mate, because we we look down on it. The it's tall poppy syndrome. The top but syndrome, right? Yeah. I don't think I, I think it's dangerous when it's a personal thing. I think you need to be able to, mm. and it's something I, I haven't been able to do. And if you read yeah. Thomas's book, he's had a lot of trouble with. Is, is mm. sit back and go. I think, yeah. Shit, man, I've done, I've done this. Like, I think that, yeah. One of the hardest you... things I've ever gone through recently, sorry, Lou, is buying the house. It was so hard for me. Yeah. Everything, yeah. it just went, no, you piece of shit, you don't get this and you don't deserve yeah. it. Like, it was the hardest. And that's yeah. dangerous, man. That's that's not. It is. It, it is. But I think, you know, Chris, when we began this podcast and when you were talking about the seminar, um, and I don't know if everybody else noticed it, but I sure did. You got a bit emotional there. And, you know, I think that I is, did, that, yeah. yeah. And do you know what? I nearly teared up. I got goosebumps watching you, but I think the bravest thing you can do is just be the authentic you because that That's is- me, where... man. I'm soft. I'm That's a it. softie. I, That's I don't it. care. I, I don't care and I've learned to handle that, you know? But you know, so. the best thing about that though, Chris, is that, um, that you're on here publicly doing it and, that is the best thing that you don't care because the people that do care they're themselves they're the people that hold themselves back and similar to what cam was just saying then i think the bravest thing that we can ever do is own our stories you know and it is what it is we we've played the cards that we've been dealt and but what i'm saying is you know the bravest thing we can do is is own our story, Cam, and going back to what you were just saying, I've had very, very similar conversations in my own, own mind about those things. Like, you guys all know my story and my backstory. I've hid my story for many, many years. People say to me, how, how I lied about how old I was for the last 20 years because I was so fearful of being judged of the life that I'd lived previously. I don't anymore because you know what? Those situations and those decisions have put me where I am today. I've had to own them and it's it's made me who I am today. But, and it's the same with, you know, doing certain things that uh, I think Chris, you said before, you, you have a, do I even deserve this? Am I even worthy of this? Because you've got to, you've got to, you've got to have that um, ability to forgive and forget and to come to um, understanding of certain things that have happened, you know? And, um, but I think that's where Correct, Cam, you um, owning your story and Chris, you being so raw and honest here is, is so awesome because Cam, if you want to make a difference in blokes' lives, I can tell you the best thing you can do is just be you and everybody can just be them and that will create those conversations that need to happen. Yeah, I 100% agree. 100% mm. agree. You know, funny, what's it? That I, I've probably been okay on a certain level for a while, but some of the, the people who have the most NGE, CL, I mean, Chris asked if it's an Aussie thing not to pat yourself on the back, but the people who have the most NGE are the most outspoken and the most loud and the most egotistical and the most look at me, look at me, look at me. And then they're the ones that go home at night and shut the door and cry themselves to sleep. What's the, you talk about ego hijacking you, but also trying to protect you, yeah? What's the, what's the go there? Don't they say the loudest person in the room is usually the most insecure person in the room? Is that sort of what they say? <laughs> Maybe, that's a good answer. Maybe that's a very good answer. I, I, I think that uh, we don't have that much time left. I want to ask you, uh, this seminar here, I asked no one to really come and thank me. How, how did that make you feel, ending the seminar and then just walk away? Mm. Well, I came in dry hump just on the wrong road. <laughs> Because I don't care how humble you're trying to be, man. I'm going to give you... Was that... Well, I want to know why you did that. Was that... Was that... Um, was it humility? Was it false humility? Was it... what? what was it... Trying to see how... Let me ask you 
to answer my question. Yeah, yeah. I want to know why you help me answer it with a question. <laughs> it, it felt strange to me because we've always done that. It felt really like, but it, but it also, um, it also made me think that for you um, being grounded in who you are, you don't need that. You just are content with who you are and what you've done. So not that I not that I think you needed it before. Maybe we needed it more than you did. But to me, that was like um, an honourable thing to do. Okay. Well, I, I just I went no. Oh. That's different, and then I went straight, <laughs> from, and then I went straight into trying to work out why, and I I just went into a analyzing what you're doing, right? Because, but um, and I never I couldn't work it out, so I thought, stuff it, I'll go and dry hunt the bloke. He, he doesn't get to tell me what to do. <laughs> no, I don't know. Know. Just, I don't know. <laughs> Honourable Lou, it's interesting because he's never said, he's never once said at any of the seminars I've been lined up. Thank me. So saying, so people have done it out of human nature respect and out of yeah. wanting to. So, and, and I don't know if anyone feels like they've done it out of obligation. Maybe there are some people who feel like they've done obligation, but that's not obligation that TL's put on anyone. So I don't know if it's honourable for him to tell people not to. Maybe some people wanted to thank him. Maybe there was people in the room who've just had a life-changing moment and all they wanted was to go and high-five the bloke who gave it to him. I don't know. Mm. Chris. What about you, Chris? You no, know, I think there's a lot of people in that room would have been feel obligated to come up and thank you. And it's funny you say that, Cam. I honestly think a lot of people would have felt that. Myself, I don't feel the necessary like it's necessary to come up and thank you. I think it's necessary to put what you've given us into action, and that's more of a thanks or a thank you on a one-on-one -on -one basis over a drink or something later with a mm. chat. Um, when you did say that. I did think to myself, a lot like Cam, I'm going, there's a bit more to this than meets the eye, but, you know, it'll unravel a little bit later on, I think. But um, um, you you hid behind the uh, COVID talk. Um, <laughs> but it, it was unusual, but I was like, it makes sense. It makes sense. How about just let everyone leave the room with their thoughts, go back, do what they need to do, and they, they they will they will show me in turn what they got out of this and mm. how, how much they appreciate what I give them. What was the real reason the for it? To you? What was the real reason for it? That's a good question. Uh, <clears throat> there was no real reason. I think that all three of you have brought up some really good reason. One, it was different. Two, I always remember the words of Wayne Dyer when he said, you know. He received a letter from someone who said how great he was doing stuff and how great his information are. And he used to say to himself, that is an imposter. And then he would receive a letter of someone saying, man, how bad you're doing and, and your information is crap. And he says, that is also an imposter. And so what I was trying to really say to people is take the material and do something with it. That would be a way of thanking me. Yeah. Don't come and thank me because that's what we do at the end of the seminar. And then walk away and say, do you know what? I have now shifted my responsibility with the material. And so I think I prov wanted to provoke some kind of different thinking in people, but also to, to let them know your change will be the thank you that I will really enjoy. Your improvement in applying the information, that is the only thank you that matters to me. Because over the years, I've received many thank yous and many people saying to me, I will do the everything that is, and then within three days, it hasn't. And I went, but hold on, what about your word to me? And it never felt good to me. And so this time, I, I also wanted to let people know I'm no different. I just managed to get some of this information from all the years of being on this planet. Now it's your turn to just do something with it. If you did it, then I know I'm being thanked. And, and so that's, uh, I think that was the only reason I did that. You must have really loved me because I'm there every five minutes. I'm doing good, man. Doing good. How are you doing? doing good, yes, we, we, which, which uh, it's good that you brought it up because every single time you did that, I always went, no. 
Uh, I will feel good when I see the change. I wasn't trying to make you feel good, but you're also after feedback, mate. You know me very well. I'll never give you positive feedback that, that I don't actually feel. No, no actually, right? it's a very good point that you brought up. I, I actually do not, I will I be, be very careful about saying do not care, but I will not uh, be um, paying too much attention to feedback anymore. Someone said to me, a leader spoke to me today and said, oh, well, you know, I had my team members going to training yesterday and made, they said it was good. And I said, since when do I want to have their feedback? If they want to give me feedback, use the material, get listings, because then I know the feedback is in the listing. But I'm not going to ask team members about their feedback, about how good the training session was, because I don't care. All right. There's different types of feedback, though. You want a barometer for the room. I think, I mean, I think you asked me at one point, what are the conversations like? That's, how, that's trying to get a feel for what's going on, yeah? Yeah, but you, you probably like felt like almost like, hold on, he doesn't even care about what I actually. Oh, you didn't care about what I was saying because he just turned away and walk away. That's why I had to actually physically assault you. But that's. Um... <laughs> So the, and the other bit of what I was doing was very simple. One of the biggest things that I work on is respect. And I'm not going to have claps, embrace people thanking me as a token of respect. That is no longer what I'm after. And that was an exercise for me to really ask people, just go. Don't worry about whatever it is. We can get information from anywhere. Just live a good life. Mm. But let, let's end this maybe... Uh, podcast with what is the one lesson that you guys walked away with? Who's going first? <laughs> I, I don't care. I mean, I... Hey, Lou. Time was pretty, time was pretty easy. It's two words. I'm okay. That was, and honestly, that might be oversimplifying it. And I was lucky. I am lucky enough to work with TL a lot closer. So a lot of this work had been done. So I probably didn't, hit me as hard as some people in the room which was a great thing for a change <laughs> uh, yeah I, I got to the end of day one and i went shit i don't, <laughs> I don't need to sleep I'm, i don't need i don't need a psychologist i'm okay <laughs> mm, mm. Uh, i'm okay and, and a lot of people are starting to realize that they're okay a lot of good conversations with and you know, I made a point of going and mending some bridges while I was there, some some yeah. uh, feuds yeah. behind the scenes and some bits and pieces. I just made a point of going and shaking a few hands and hugging a few people and saying, we're okay, man, we're okay. And that was, I think that was the overwhelming feel for a lot of people there. So we're okay. Mm. 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 Um, okay, I think for me, mine was, um, and the only way, way in which I can put it is to embrace the hot mess that we are sometimes because um, yes we have our own issues and and we have our own demons we have our own past and until we learn to embrace that wholeheartedly and to understand that and to um, be okay with it we can't be compassionate and courageous and inspiring individuals until we own our own story and we forgive our past and move forward we can't um, be the change that we wish to see in the world. And I wish I knew then what I know now, because knowledge is power, but time is money. And not that money is everything, but when we have the knowledge right and we apply it right, and we have the understanding of who we are and we move forward on that basis, we have the perfect recipe to, to live our greatest life and to do amazing things. One with <laughs> your number one lesson. I it takes me a little bit of elaboration. One lesson. To get to I do two words. Yeah, you do eight say. pages. I say, you know, I'm okay. I know Rita is watching. She said to me at the conference, she said, Lou, no matter what those boys say to you, just know I'm always <laughs> watching. <laughs> I, I, a reminder my wife's an actress, right? She used to be an actress. Just one, <laughs> one, one lesson, Chris. One, one lesson. Stop All it. Right. The, like the, the 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 first point was embracing, yeah. But the second point was, which I really took the heart was when you're when you're aware, no one can take you prisoner. 
but on top of that, not avail yourself if you're aware. Mm. That's that's the big big thing I talk. So oh, if you're sorry, if you're, sorry, if you're aware yeah. if you're aware why you're doing things and so forth, now you're aware why you, even yourself can't take yourself prisoner. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's that's I took a lot out of that. Right. Tell you, you're the one who delivered the information. What lesson did you get out of this? <laughs> no, I'm serious. What did you learn? That you guys are not worthy of my information. Anyway, no, that's... <laughs> thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We respect no. you. Thank no, you. Honestly, I'm, I'm... I, 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 I hope I hope that people really who are in the room understood that being there is not going to fix a thing. And, and the biggest thing for me. Uh, throughout all of this work in NGE. You know, about three years ago, I was, four years ago, I was back home with my dad apologizing to me in his own words about the things he's done to me. Mm -hmm. But when I walked away from that, my NGE did not change. And so the only thing I really want to share with the people who are in the room and people are listening is that I could be the one doing NGE to people. And I've done a lot of NGE onto my own kids and my own brothers and sisters and, and rereading the power of you it was there and people could be doing ng to us just as much as we are going to keep on doing ng to our children them apologizing to us them sitting down with us and telling us i beg for your forgiveness is not going to fix us mm. We have to fix our own NGE, and that takes all of this work. No one is going to remove NGE away from us. But I tell you one thing, whether it is in business or in your private life, once NGE has been befriended, gosh, your life is going to be way, way more than just a normal bleep in the universe. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for today. And by the way, Cam, your wine won today and mine was last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How was yours last? Uh, that was my way of showing you about NGE. Uh, and I'm cool. I'm, I, I was not good enough today. <laughs> hey, thank you very much again for today. Hey See you mate. Look forward to the party. Looking forward to the party on Sunday, Chris. Who's already gone? <laughs> Yeah, one lesson. Can we do one lesson? <laughs> <laughs>